the um, it's later in the day now. It's been a pretty good day so far. I got all my homework done and had some apple cider vinegar and some a nice warm cup of Miralax. So I'm feeling a little bit better. So I'm gonna take the the opportunity to um, I, I have some tomato plants that are still up. And I have some asparagus that I wanted to chop down to the ground, so I'm going to do that. And I think I have some pepper plants and stuff. And um, Once I chop all that down, the stalks are pretty thick, so I'm just going to put that in my compost. But I'm going to top off all the beds with leaves, just maple leaves. Um, but I also have um, this bin that I got from a local restaurant, uh, like a co-op, all-organic restaurant. Um, I'll show you. I'm going to dump that in the in the compost real quick and I'll show you what I gotta what I'm gonna do with these beds up this a uh, couple days ago and it's all banana peels and whatnot I'd gotten some other mixed vegetables um, the lady uh, makes a whole bunch of different wraps and different dishes salads and whatnot and I just leave her I think she has three buckets now and when she does her juices and all that stuff she prepares her food she just sets all the scraps in the bucket and then I just go and pick it up uh, we're gonna try and do twice a week kind of hard with one hand but and that's it I just top it off with with the leaves see there's a bunch of lettuce and celery and all that stuff in there so just top it off with with the leaves it's the best time to do all this because of all the leaves that are down so I'll top that up with leaves so I'll probably just grab a bunch from here just because the early early part of the breakdown of that food will be a little smellier I mean it just smells like bananas to me but keep the neighbors from Raising a ruckus with just a pile of leaves, just a pile of leaves. But it looks like a bunch of food scraps. Somebody might complain. And then, put that back in the truck. But I was going to say about this, this is where my uh, zucchini was right here. So I'm just going to chop <clears throat> right off at the base. Well, I might just be able to grab. So I don't, I don't mind having some of this stuff here. It's not that, well, I don't really want to rip it out by the roots, but. Everything that's above ground, I'm trying to take out, but anything that's in the ground still, I'll just let it decompose there. So I'll probably just cut that off there with a knife, whatever. Um, and then this cabbage, this is finally wilting. Uh, it's still green, so I'm gonna leave it in there. I'm just using the color of the leaves if the chloroplast, chloroplast is still being activated, that means it's still green. That means it's still absorbing the energy from the sun and putting it in the soil. So some of this stuff I'll rip up and I'll put in the compost. And then I'll rake up some leaves and I'll just put a topping of leaves on all this. So I'm gonna get to work on cleaning all this stuff up and I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. I just wanted to mention these tomatoes um, and some of the other vegetables I've just let kind of ripen and then fall where they are. So hopefully in that bed there's a bunch of peppers and tomatoes that'll pop up in the spring. Um, but these, I'm pretty sure these seeds, the seeds that are in here won't be viable. But I still will grab a few handfuls and just toss them randomly around the, around the property and maybe I'll get lucky. I think it'd be really cool if I had tomato plants here and elsewhere, but as I walked around there were more tomato plants that I had to like prop up with wire and whatnot I think that'd be pretty cool so like tomatoes like that whatever I'll just toss and all this all these old branches and stuff will be chopped down and then this kale I'm gonna cut that down uh, about an inch or so off of the ground level and I'll put leaves on there and that kale We'll see. I'll see if it recovers. It might still grow during the winter. Depends on how cold it gets, I suppose. But I don't remember the right the actual type of kale it is. But we'll give it a go. And of course, I have this asparagus here. And this year I didn't 
take the seeds from this and spread it around everywhere. Like these are all seedless, been seedless for a while. And they've fallen around here and hopefully two, three years they'll actually start sprouting up on their own, which would be which would be awesome. But next year, I'll wait until they go to seed, then I'll just grab them up and I'll sprinkle them around. I guess they usually take like three years for them to sprout up. Uh, I'm not sure, but it's just kind of a, um, I don't know, guess and check, just try out, see what happens. Can't really, can't really go wrong with throwing, throwing seed around. So I'm going to get to that and I'll just hit the asparagus that's over here. I'll chop it all down right to ground level. And then that should be it for today. And then if it's nice enough tomorrow or the next day, I'll pull up the rest of that. Um, those sunchokes. So I'm gonna get to work and I'll show you what it looks like after I'm done. So this area is cleaned up. I'm gonna wait on this kale. Um, I want to see, I'm kind of curious to see how that will brown out and when that browns out and if this ever like actually wilts. It seems like it's still growing so I might, I don't know, I'm gonna clean up over there where the other asparagus are, I've already chopped all these down, put them in the bin. Um, I might come back and maybe just cut half of it back and see, uh, just as a test. And a lot of this stuff I ended up just putting in to the compost. I just want to make sure that all like pests are like killed, especially out of the, uh, the zucchini and the tomatoes and stuff like that. It just, just to start off fresh. Uh, but a lot of this stuff, I mean, I'm not really worried about stuff just laying out here because that's nature doesn't have anybody that comes around and and trims all their dead branches and whatnot. So, no, uh, but I just like this because it I'm in a residential area, it kind of cleans up the area, cleans it up, makes it look better. And I had already put straw in here, um, and I just put more leaves just because there's a few tomatoes in there and I had I still have quite a lot down there grab another handful or two but I tossed them all around here and there and I'd done that throughout the year too so back there and there so uh, we'll see how many of those um, root up and grow next year but I'm just gonna run over I'm gonna do this all these asparagus here um, Talking about asparagus, the, uh, I just cleared out this patch and I'll show you. The interesting thing about asparagus is I bought them uh, two-year-old crowns. I planted these all in the spring. Um, and they had already, <clears throat> within I think 14 days, they had already started to crown up and all that. I'd eaten some, but I just left it. Um, the first, after buying the two-year-old crowns, they had plenty, I mean, they were a crown, so it had like the head of it, and then off of the side, it had like eight roots, whatever you want to call them. And for that first year, I wanted them to grow as long as they could, do seed, get as much uh, sun energy, put it into the roots. So I just cut these back, and I just cut them back because I didn't want any anything to be in each of those stems, any parasite or anything like that, to make its way back in. Um, I'm not too sure on the signs. I've heard like a couple of people just talk about it. Um, it's better to cut them back just to maximize the chances that uh, there won't be any infections or parasites or anything like that. I'm not sure. I do know um, it's not going to hurt anything. It cost you know cost me. I've been out here 45 minutes. So it took me 45 minutes and a and a sickle or whatever um, to do it. And it also cleans it up and makes it look better. And I'll turn it around and I'll show you. I just tossed tossed each of the stems whatever uh, ferns uh, just to the side and that's mostly where I just tossed the ferns I had <clears throat> from right where my finger is that flag I had spaced them out every couple of feet and then I just got tired of it and then I just dug this whole area out and I just planted 15 or 20 here um, yeah like probably 20 25 and they sprouted like each crown there was like seven different shoots that came off of each one and they're varying varying depth and I mean thickness and all that and length um, and that's what's gonna happen next year is all these these are connected to the crown but on these 
to my knowledge, and if anybody knows any different, um, this doesn't regrow. There will be a new sprout that comes up from that crown that comes up. So all this, even though this is still green, unfortunately, most of these were brown and they were done for the season. And some of these shorter ones I just left, whatever. Um, but yeah, that crown itself, all those dead ones are just useless and they'll continue to break down and rot and go back into the soil. Um, and I just put these nearby because it's simple and easy and I'm just putting back this, you know, those nutrients and stuff back to the soil. And it was really nice that all these leaves fell from that mulberry. So I got plenty of energy going back into the soil. Um, and then I got, still have a few bushes right along here. And, and um, but yeah. So that's pretty much all I got to do, or have had to do. I'm going to, I think I'm just going to rip one of these out right now. Just to, just to show you again, and then I'll get this thing uploaded. I'm going to pull up this one because it's just about the tallest one I got, if you can kind of tell. This thing kind of adjusts for the lighting there. I just want to see. One. Remember, I'm holding a camera here, so I'm not swinging around everywhere. Yeah, curious to find out what that green stuff is. The last one I'd pulled out, it had a lot more here, um, and I was kind of expecting more to be on there. But the last one I'd pulled up, it had some on there, and then it didn't really have too many to either side of it. So. Oh yeah, there's ones all over the place here. Oh geez. I just broke one. Oh geez. Oh, well, there's a whole new whole new plant growing there. Get some of the dirt off of here. Alright, before I go any further, I just want to show you that I planted like this. This is probably about as much as I planted right here. Um, and it looks I don't know how it sprouts, if they just combined here. I'm not sure exactly how that works. We can kind of see where it's grown off of. Um, but I'm curious to see how much more is down there. It's spread quite a ways. I didn't bring my little hand shovel with me. Yeah, oh geez, another big one. Yeah, <laughs> I could replant this whole area with just this. It'd be perfectly fine. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool plant. Super easy to plant. Don't have to work. Um, especially if you can just cook it and prepare it like a potato. Well, that's all I'm gonna be able to do with my hand. I think that that's probably just about all that was there, especially for a new area. I think that's pretty good. I've seen um, other people where they've gotten a lot more. Um, that might just be because uh, it was like the second or third year they had head stuff there. So there's one. So yeah, I think that's about say one, two little nobules. I think that's the last the last one I pulled up was about seven times what I had planted and that's this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and who knows how many yeah it's definitely a great return on investment and all you gotta do is just plop that and just throw your wood shift back over it it's probably better if you bury it in the soil, and I'll, I'll do that for the other ones. I'm just I'm working one-handed out here, so. All right, that's it for today. I'll take you along while I pull the rest of these up. And again, thanks for watching.